It's Only a Paper Moon is the 160th episode of the television series Star Trek – Deep Space Nine and the tenth episode of the seventh season. Directed by Anson Williams, the episode was written by Ronald D. Moore and based on a pitch by David Mack and John J. Ordover, who had previously written, "'Starship Down' from Season 4. The episode serves as a sequel to "'The Siege of R-558' Season 7 Episode 8, with Nog suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and phantom pain following the loss of his leg. Topic. Plot After having his leg replaced after a battle injury in the Siege of R-558, and following months of rehabilitation at Starbase 235, Nog returns to Deep Space Nine. He suffers flashbacks of his injury and feels pain in his new leg, even though the doctors do not detect any physical pain stimuli. The crew greets him warmly and intends to throw him a party, but Nog instead secludes himself in his quarters, sleeping most of the day and listening to a recording by Vic Fontaine of, I'll be seeing you, on repeat. When Jake becomes fed up with the constant repetition, Nog seeks out Vic in Quirk's Hollow Suite. After hearing Vic perform the song in every arrangement he knows, Nog convinces Vic to allow him to stay in his suite at the hotel for the night. Nog then decides to stay long-term, and with some disagreement among the senior staff, as well as Nog's family, and with assurances from Vic of his ability to help, Counselor Ezra Dax consents to the idea to see where it leads. Vic and Nog bond quickly, but at the expense of Nog's relations with his friends and family, he gets in a fight with Jake and a meeting with his father Rom and stepmother Lita is short and awkward. Vic and Nog continue to grow closer, and as a Ferengi, Nog is happy to help Vic with his finances, and even recommends Vic expand his business. The two plan to build a new casino, and as Nog becomes more confident, he relies less and less on his cane. Esri, impressed by Vic's results, reminds him that Nog needs to leave soon. Vic had been enjoying himself so much that he had forgotten Nog was there for rehabilitation. Vic then urges Nog to leave, and when he refuses, Vic self-terminates the program, forcing Nog back into the real world. Nog attempts to restart the Hollow Suite, but Miles O'Brien, having detected his efforts from Ops, explains to Nog that Vic can prevent his own program from starting. O'Brien tells Nog that everyone misses him before leaving him alone. Vic then appears, and Nog finally admits the emotional trauma his injury caused and his fear of death. Vic counters that if he stays in the Hollow Suite, he'll still die. Not all at once, but little by little. Nog returns to limited duty but convinces Quark to leave the program running all the time to return the favor to Vic and to give him a chance at a real life. Topic. Production The episode derives its name from the 1933 song of the same name. The episode was initially written by David Mack and John J. Ordover. They initially pitched the episode as, Everybody Comes to Quarks, and sold it alongside what would later become the season 4 episode, Starship Down. The original episode was set entirely in Quark's bar, following three separate storylines. The plot, sort of bounced around the writer's room for a couple of years, before it was set to following Nog's loss of his leg and relocated to Quark's Vic Fontaine Hollowsuite program. Mac and Ordover were hired to rewrite the story to account for these changes, and Ronald D. Moore further rewrote. Moore removed the second and third storylines as he felt they interfered with the dramatic impact of Nog's PTSD. Keith DeCandido, a close friend of both Mac and Ordover, noted in his rewatch of this episode in 2016 that he was slightly disappointed that so little remained of the original pitch, writing that, "...there are some gems in the original that the world has seriously missed out on." Although he still rated the episode a nine-tenths, Aaron Eisenberg, who plays Nog, has stated that this episode is his personal favorite. 
He mentioned in several interviews that after the episode aired, wounded combat veterans and VSOs, veteran service organizations, contacted and praised him for his realistic portrayal of the psychological trauma of being severely wounded in battle and the resulting loss of a limb, a trauma which often lasts far longer than the physical injury itself. Vic and Nog preferring the searchers over Shane as a minor in joke, since the searchers featured Jeffrey Hunter, who played Captain Christopher Pike in the Star. Trek, the original series' first pilot episode, The Cage. Topic: <inaudible> Cultural references. Vic gives Nog a fictional cane similar to one Errol Flynn once used to replace Nog's Starfleet-issued cane. Vic also refers to being bigger than Elvis. Had Julian Bashir become his publicist. Vic and Nog watch two 1950s films, The Searchers and Shane, and prefer the former. Vic Fontaine sings, I'll Be Seeing You, which also appeared in The Siege of R 558, Just in Time, I've Got the World on a String, and It's Only a Paper Moon. Reception Keith DeCandido, writing for Tor.com, believed it to be a superb episode, writing that it's "...a testament to the strength of DS9's ensemble that it can give over an entire story to two characters who aren't even opening credits regulars and make it one of the show's most compelling hours." He gave the episode a "...warp factor rating." of nine-tenths, removing a point due to Esri Dax's incompetence as a counselor, and because of how much of the original, "'Everybody Comes to Quarks' pitch was removed see the production section above, Jamal Epsikohan of Jammer's Reviews gave the episode 3.5, 4 stars. He praised Nog's, "'Vivid, Believable Character Evolution' which complemented his growth throughout the series and summarized it as one of the most effective, small, DS9 stories in quite some time. In addition, Epsikohan enjoyed the mystery behind Vic Fontaine in regards to his sentience and own growing character development, pointing out the scene in which Nog asks Vic, When you sleep, do you dream? and Vic avoiding the question. The AV Club's Zach Hanlon conversely disliked the unexplored implications of Vic's consciousness, especially as the episode featured him significantly more than previous episodes. He also somewhat disliked Nog's post-traumatic stress disorder being solved in the space of one episode. However, Hanlon noted how Nog's PTSD has some real edges to it, and how some aspects of it should be familiar to anyone who's suffered a period of severe depression." He lauded Aaron Eisenberg's acting and, in contrast to DeCandido's review, referred to Esri's counseling as, "...not terrible," while he wished that the writers hadn't, "...taken the easy way out in the end with the magical all-knowing computer program." He found the ending in which Nog arranges to keep Vic's program running all day, sweet, based on user ratings. It's only a paper moon. Holds an 8.3, 10 on TV.com and an 8.0, 10 on IMDb in 2016. Hollywood Reporter ranked this episode as the 14th best of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. They note that it follows up on some of the events of The Siege of R558 which they had ranked as 15th best of the series. They rated the episode the 56th best episode of all Star Trek episodes to date.